All right, so let's talk about vector addition. And the one thing I know you should understand is vector addition is a little bit more complicated than numerical addition. And, and let's talk about why that is. So let's work an example. So let's suppose a woman leaves home. and walks three miles north then two miles southeast and I want to know two things. I want to know how far has she walked? Actually, I want to know three things. I want to know how far has she walked? How far as the crow flies? Is she from home? And if she was going to turn and walk straight far, straight home, what direction would she Would she need to go to get straight home, to go straight home? Okay. Now, so let's introduce a coordinate system to this problem. And we get to pick where the origin is. And we're going to put the origin right here. We're going to put home at the origin. So this is home. So she walks three miles north. One, two, three. That's three miles north. And then she turns and walks southeast. So here's what you need to know about, and when we're talking about vectors, the north, south, east, and west, that's pretty easy. Northeast, southeast, southwest, and north, northwest all mean traveling at 45 degrees. So south East means going this way at an angle of 45 degrees. And here's what I know. I know that this vector is 3 miles and this vector is 2 miles. Now, if she wants to go directly home, that's directly home. In order to describe that, I actually need to think about what would her compass look like at this point. And let's say we're going to give that angle right there, and then we're going to say south of east. Now, so that red angle that I just, or that red vector that I just drew, is a version of the angle sum. It's not, it's not quite the vector, or excuse me, a version of the vector sum. That's not quite the vector sum. So when we add vectors together, because what I'm really doing, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. So let me do this. Make these all a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So when I add two vectors together, we can add vectors mathematically or geographically, or excuse me, geometrically. And I'm going to show you both. So Let's, let's think about this. If I've got this vector A, so the first thing I need to understand is that what I drew here describes how she would go to get home. 
it doesn't really describe the sum of the two vectors because the sum of the two vectors, so if this is vector A, and I want to add to that another vector B, what I do is I arrange my two vectors head to tail. That means I take my second vector and I put it, remember I said a few minutes ago you can move vectors anywhere in space. So I put the head of my second vector on the tail of my first vector. So I'm using some words I haven't used before. The starting point of a vector is the head. The ending vector is the tail, or the ending point is the tail. Okay? And then you connect the two vectors together. And so you start at the head of the first vector and end at the tail of the last vector. And that is A plus B. Okay, now I've made a triangle there. And we've talked a lot about how to solve triangles, right? And in this case, I know that this is, so I know, I know this length is 3. And I know this length is 2. And I know this angle is 45 degrees. I've got the two sides of a triangle and the angle in between them. And so I can find the length of the third side, right? Sure. A lot of, a lot of cosines will do that. So A plus B. Well, I can find the length. That would be the magnitude, right? Okay. So the magnitude of A plus B is... 3 squared plus 2 squared minus 2 times 3 times 2 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And that's the magnitude squared. So my magnitude, the length of my vector, in other words, this is the answer to... 4 plus 9 minus 12 times square root of 2 over 2, so 6 square root 2. So let's see what that number is. 13 minus 6 square root 2 is 4.515. Okay, but I need now the square root of that. So the square root of 13 minus 6 square root 2 is 2.125. So the length of my vector sum is 2.125 miles. Now this is the answer to how far is she from home as the crow flies. Right, so this distance is 2.125. Now, how would I find the angle? Because I need to know a, dis a, a direction, right? And so I want to find either this angle or this angle. And I'll take either one because they're related, because they add up to 90 degrees. Well, the law of sines would give me that angle, yes? Sure. Because I know that 2.125, well, let's do it this way. Let's say the sine of 45 degrees divided by that distance I just found is equal to the sine of alpha divided by 2. So that means that the sine of alpha is 2, sine 45 is square root 2 over 2, divided by 2.1215, which means alpha is the inverse sine of square root 2 divided by 2.1215. Whoops, I manufactured a number, 1.125. 1 
So the inverse sine of the square root of 2 divided by 2.125 is 41.72 degrees. And in this case, because we're talking about direction, we would call that east of north. Okay, so you have to pay attention to that. All right, now that is not, however, the direction she needs to walk, right? The direction she needs to walk to get straight home is this guy, theta, which is the angle with the horizontal. So I need to know, so what do I know? What do I know? Well, I know that this guy is alpha, which is 41.72. So theta would be Ninety degrees minus forty one point seven two degrees, which is forty eight point two eight. But in order to get home, she needs to walk south of west because the angle I found was this one. Okay. So I've answered a couple of questions here. I have answered how far is she from home as the crow flies. She is 2.125 miles from home. And she would take a bearing of 48.28 degrees south of west to walk straight home. The only question I haven't walked is how far has, or haven't answered is how far has she walked? Well, that's not nearly as hard as you think it is because she walked three miles and then she walked to two miles. So she has walked five miles. Okay, so that's one method of vector addition. Now, I think this is the harder method of vector addition, particularly if you try to add, if you're needing to add more than two vectors together. So let's look at another example here. So let's suppose I've got a, a crate. And I've got three different forces acting on this crate. I want that one force pulling it straight horizontally. And I've got another force pulling it this way. And that force is acting with an angle at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. And then I've got another horse, force, excuse me, could be horses, could be something else, acting this way. And we're told that this force is actually acting, if I draw this horizontal, at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal but below. Okay, so I could... I could absolutely, if I wanted to, take these forces and arrange them with the 7 Newton force and then the 6 Newton force, and this angle needs to be 30 degrees. And then I'm going to have that 4 Newton force acting downward 60 degrees. And I could connect those two dots 
and this is what we call my resultant vector. The resultant vector is just the sum of the two vectors, or of all the vectors in the system. I could do that. Now, in my head, that's a little bit obnoxious because that's not a triangle. So let's talk about how we do this in, ve in component form, because component form is easy, is, is easy too, because if you think about what would happen if we turned all of these guys into components, so suppose I had the x component of, and y component of this guy, and then I had the x component and y components of this guy, and the x component of this guy, they are all going to add up to the x and y components of my resultant vector. So let's talk about how we do that. So this is my preferred method of doing vector addition. It works all the time if you're careful with your signs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these guys names. The N, by the way, stands for Newtons. It's just the vector form, or sorry, the metric unit of force. Okay. So my resultant vector is A plus B plus C using vector addition. So R sub X is the X component of my resultant vector, okay? So the x component is just the sum of the x components of the other three vectors. And the y component is the sum of the y components. OK? So. Let's think about this. So I told you how to do this. So the vector A in component form, that one's easy. That's just negative 7, 0. Component B in vector form, B has a magnitude of 6 operating at an angle of 30 degrees. which means that B, so cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. So this is 3 square root 3. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, 3. Because 6 times 1 half is 3. OK, so vector C has got a magnitude of 4 operating at a cosine at an angle of 60 degrees with a horizontal. Now here's where and so the y component is sine 60 degrees. But remember I told you, you have to be a little careful with your directions. So I want you to think about this. This vector is operating downward. So the y component should be negative because the displacement to get from top to or head to tail is negative, it's downward. Sine of 60 degrees isn't negative. We've got a couple options. We could turn that into an angle in standard position and take the sine of 300 degrees, but we can also just put a minus sign in front because we know the vector needs to act downward. Okay, so the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so this is 2. And then the sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, so negative 2 square root 3. OK, so my vector r in component form is negative 7 plus 3 square root 3 plus 2 as the x's. And for the y's, it's 0 plus 3 minus 2 square root 3. So the sum of the x's, the sum of the x components, gives you your x component of your resultant vector. The sum of the y components gives you the resultant, the y component of your resultant vector. And so typically we're going to want these to be in numbers. So my resultant vector is approximately 
negative 0 0.196, 0 0.464. Now what's that mean? Well, that means that my box is going to tend to move very slightly in this direction. Okay? All right. If you want to put that in terms, our brains don't think in components very much. So, and we really want to know how much force and at what angle, right? So, if we want to do that, we can find the magnitude of my resultant. And that's just the square root of negative 0 0.196 squared plus 0 0.464 squared. Which is 0 0.504. Now my angle theta, we've got a couple ways we can describe that. I already told you that it's going to look something like this, right? So suppose I want to just do the angle from standard position. So we'll call that guy theta. So theta is the inverse tangent of the y over the x. So 0 0.464 divided by negative 0 0.196, which is approximately, when I put that into Desmos, it's going to give me negative 67.089 degrees. Now that's not what I want because I drew a positive angle. So I can also, I remember that if we think about my unit circle, and what I've got is I got this result. What I want is that result, which if I think about it, that means that's 180 minus plus that negative angle or minus that 67.089, which turns out to be 112.91 degrees from standard, from standard position. So the resultant force on this box is 0.504 newtons acting at an angle of 112.91 degrees. All right, that's it for vectors. Um, well, that's it for vectors for the moment. Your textbook talks about scaling vectors. That's fairly straightforward. I'm going to leave, leave that for you to... Um, investigate from the textbook and we are going to talk about a method of vector multiplication one of two different ways we can multiply vectors in the next section in section 8.5.